Hello, how's it going? So this is what we're going to be looking at today. It's the Brawl and Cure Statistical Distribution Analyzer Type 4420-4420. So I picked this up a while back. It was rather cheap. I don't think it was much more than £20 or something. It was just very interesting. And yeah, I didn't really know what it did. As you can see, the back is already off and some of the circuit boards have been taken out. See, yesterday I did a Patreon live stream opening this up and sort of explaining my plans for this machine for this video. First off, let's switch it on and show you what it does out of the box. Yeah. This was used to analyze distribution within the, the 2211 or the 2305 Brawl and Cure plotter. But I fear right now, nowadays, this is not much use for that. But as you can tell, it sounds reasonably nice, just this single clicking. But you can see at the bottom, there's another 12 of these clickers. Well, what I plan to do is turn this into a sort of shaker percussion instrument, like a drum machine, if you will. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use all of these 12 to sort of make a... <laughs> That kind of sound. So uh, how am I going to do that? Let's take one of these out first for ease of serviceability. So these things, basically, they just need 12 volts between these two uh, points to uh, go. Oh, look at that. I'm just sending 12 volts into it. So imagine 12 of these flammed out and sounding reasonably saucy. Yesterday in the live stream, I had a look in the back and I came to the conclusion I'm not even gonna bother using the mains power anymore. It just seems to make it unnecessarily dangerous. So I've made this little circuit right here, which is a MOSFET circuit. What this MOSFET does is it's sort of like an electronic switch that switches these on and off. This is the schematic right here and I use it quite a bit to uh, control various electromagnetic mechanical devices. You can use this to turn on LED strips, you can use it to control motors, solenoids, uh, clickers. But right now we need to build 12 of these so we can control all 12 of these outside of the box. So how are we going to trigger these MOSFETs? Well the great thing is if you send a voltage into the input of the MOSFET circuit it basically just makes the clicker click. So if we plug that into a button it will go on the clickers, but how do we make them kind of cascade onto each other to make it sound like a flam, like a more like a shaker that goes like, what's there, a guiro? So the way I think we're going to achieve this sound is to trigger the counters in a very quick succession, one after the other. And to do this, we're going to use something called a serial to parallel shift register. Ooh. So we're talking about a serial to parallel shift register. What what does that mean? Apart from the fact that serial sounds tasty. Mm. So serial and parallel correlate to bits in a bit register, you know, ones and zeros, on and offs and all that jizz jazz. Serial and parallel are two ways of displaying bits. Serial basically means you're sending bits one after the other through a single wire. So it goes like one, zero, one, one, zero, one, one. Sort of like Morse code, you're like one, zero. Parallel is different. You're actually sending the bits in parallel with each other. So instead of just having one wire, for an 8-bit sequence, you actually have eight wires. One, two, three, four. You end up sending it like this. This wire will have voltage going through it. This wire won't. This wire will, will, won't, will. This isn't a computer channel, so why are we talking about bit registers? Well, this is because there is a certain chip called a serial to parallel shift register. And what this does is it converts the serial, which is a single wire going over into a parallel shift register which means it comes out in separate wires and we can use this serial to parallel shift register to actually make the effect that we want to achieve imagine and right here is a circuit that i built in another live stream and this live stream was about figuring out how to use this chip right here which is a 74 hc 595 so each of these leds are wired up to the chip's legs parallel outputs there's eight of them because this is an 8-bit shift register so oh, over here is a 555 timer chip that is sending a clock this quick into this chip circuit so this clock tells the shift register to transfer it to parallel every time it goes clickety click and as you can see look at that look at that if i really slow down the clock whatever i push the button down for is going to get transferred down this shift register look at that ooh, ooh. but if i really speed it up it does it a lot quicker. Taking all of this into account, imagine these LEDs, instead of them being LEDs, they were actually the MOSFET circuits that were causing the clickers to click. It would go 
And that is exactly what we're about to do. And here is a little something I made earlier. Basically, it's 12 of the MOSFET circuits and two of the serial to parallel shift register circuits uh, kind of mushed onto a bit of strip board. I won't share the strip board layout because there is a million ways to do this better. I really made this up as I went and as you can see, it's an absolute mess. But this circuit right here means that we're gonna be able to make this sound like the worst shaker this world has ever seen. Right here is the hardware and the circuits, basically everything that we need to put this together. So let's get building. So the worst shaker in the world is now assembled and it sounds This sounds sort of like a shaker. There's a piezo speaker on the side, which we're gonna try in a minute to amplify the sound. But first, because this is gonna be in an interactive section in the Museum of Everything Else, we need to add one thing to stop people getting electrocuted. Oh, don't tell me it doesn't fit after all of this time. How cool is that? It actually looks like a museum thingamajiggy. So now it's in this case, so it's a little bit more isolated from the outside world. So now you're gonna hear the direct recording from the piezo contact microphones. Quickly adjust the speed. This one's a single click. And a smaller flower. Oh, how wonderfully pointless this shaker instrument really is. <laughs> the buttons are also set up so you can actually send in voltages, like clock triggers. <laughs> So that is that. Yeah, it's pretty pointless, but at least it's done. I'm pretty happy I managed to just complete it even halfway through when I realized it was a pretty bad idea. Uh, there are some sort of usable sounds in there. In fact, it could be used as a shaker and the isolated stems from this shaker. So if you want shaker toppers from this uh, rather beautiful electromechanical useless piece of crap, well, they are available over on my Patreon. So if you want to kind of use them in your beats, well, uh, yeah, you, you can like, like just, just take it. And not to mention the free live stream that I did on this uh, about 10 days ago, well, they are still up on my Patreon. They're about an hour long each, and they were basically figuring out, taking that apart, building that, figuring it out, and stuff like this. And, but yeah, that stuff is still available to watch if you're interested. And not to mention, if you want to play this thing, it's going to be available to play at the Museum of Everything Else at uh, some point soon. I mean, this is probably the worst time to open a museum, and I'm still trying to figure out how and when and how exactly it's going to happen. But trust me, it is definitely, definitely nearly there. Just got to figure out what, 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 because obviously there's lockdowns and stuff happening again. Anyway, I've been Look Mum No Computer. This is a rather useless electromechanical guero. And yeah, if you like this, don't forget to subscribe and don't be scared to try it.